Alright guys, time to go back again today. Hope you're all doing well and enjoying your day so far. Welcome back to Valorant News and Lowe's to dive into today. Some updates with episode 4 just around the corner, but mainly roster stuff to dive into. T1 making some major changes. Seems like their roster may be finalised going into VCT 2022. Very much intrigued to your thoughts in the comment section below. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button. It's the best thing you can do. Top this channel reach new people. Please do subscribe as well if you have not yet already. Thanks so much for all the new subs. These last days. More to come, I'm sure, with them, well, loads of teams needing to finalise their roster into the new season. Firstly, this from Riot that comes out last night, because they pretty much say, we're going to try and get rid of insta-locking in ranked. Now, um, the way they're going to do that is through cascade picking, so effectively, like, um, one player gets to pick, and, like, they have maybe 5-10 seconds to do that, then after they pick, the next player gets the opportunity to do so. Of course, um, I'm not sure how exactly this works in League of Legends, whether it's just randomised what order you get in, maybe it's, um, you know, done from game to game, like, if you get a bad rank one game, you'll get a high rank next game. I don't no. The fact of the matter is that I guess it stops people interlocking. At the same time, it does mean that if you're earlier on, you know, you get the opportunity to take Jet, right? So as uh, Vanity says, can't wait for players like V1 Zilsis taking Jet over NVA. You know, you go into ranked, and then, um, you know, the first guy's gonna pick Jet, and if you're at the bottom, even if you're a Jet main, unlucky mate, there's nothing you can do about it. So is this better? Is this worse? Tough to say, but um, definitely some reaction to it. Definitely intrigued to your perspective. Now, this also lets dive into some roster stuff, because every single day, there's a load going on. Excel right here announced their roster. Patty Tech, of course, and the rest of the guys on their team, as we talked about, I'm pretty sure the rumors a couple of days ago. So, of course, they're going to try and do their best to make a run. But there has been some teams announcing very recently that, um, well, did not have the success they were looking at, especially in the EMEA, for example, well, open qualifier that is going on at the present time. This also a pretty big deal from 10 Star. Doma, of course, who was recently dropped from Fnatic, and um, lots of talk about this in the guy. I'm pretty sure he may well be replacing him. But um, still, Doma is out of there. He's going to go on to 10 Star. So, you know, good move, to be honest. Interestingly enough, that the buyout for this situation from Fnatic over to Tenstar, of course, um, you know, Dome was never going to play, it seems, for Fnatic again, therefore it makes sense the buyout uh, might not be massive, but um, at the same time, the buyout, supposedly, according to Purist, was, you know, about 80 to 160k, a decent buyout, most certainly, but, um, you know, you compare that to the North American side, where some of these kids, right, signed to organisations that, um, you know, like, aren't really particularly well known, have, you know, have buyouts of 150, 200, 300k, something crazy like that, so, um, you know, it seems more reasonable in the US European scene, and that kind of is why, well, you could argue that uh, some of these organizations in North America are looking at European players as opposed to picking up some of these guys with massive buyouts, which is, uh, well, a massive issue that has been discussed lately in the North American scene. Interesting stuff, no doubt. This also then from Heretics. So Heretics take a very long time to rebuild their Valorant roster going into 2022. They finally confirm what it's going to be, bringing along some new guys alongside Alorant, and, um, I mean, still, they bring some new guys into the team, Lowell and the like, and, um, I mean, yeah, they just fall completely flat on their face. I guess this team is kind of recent. They haven't had too much time to practice. But, um, you know, the fact of the matter is that they lost in the round of 128 in the open qualifier. They lost to this team. I'm pretty sure some of these OG guys. But, I mean, look at this, right? They rebuilt their entire roster. Like, on paper, they've got some good names here that should be able to do something. And, um, I mean, yeah, this was rumored, right? And we thought this team would be pretty good. But, um, yeah, they're out of there straight away, right? Round of 128. No lower bracket, I'm pretty sure. That's, um, I mean, that's job done for, for Heretics in this open qualifier. They're not going to be in the close qualifier. They're not going to be able to get to challenges one. And their run is now all the way over until the second open qualifier in a few months time. So pretty remarkable that they spend all their time building this roster and already they're straight out of the tournament. So, you know, pretty shocking stuff, all things considered. But um, yeah, I guess that's how it goes sometimes. Only so many teams can qualify. Just crazy they went out of this tournament so early on, right in the round of 128. Let's talk then about T1 and what's going on with them. We'd like to thank Automatic for his time here at the team. He's at, well, it seems like he's going to go back to Counter-Strike. He doesn't make that amazingly explicit in a tweet that he comes up with a twit longer, but you know, we've known this was happening for quite some time. The Automatic and Skadoodle going to be out of that roster and having a pretty much a massive rebuild around Steel, their new in-game leader. So Automatic is gone. He gives us a nice um, well, twit longer really here, talking about all his former teammates and um, you know, the positive traits that they had and the positive character elements. And well, he, we imagine, is going to go back to, I'm pretty sure, CSGO, maybe Evil Genius has been the discussion at the present time. But um, yeah, Automatic's out of there, of course, as we expected. Skadoodle as well. Not much talk really about Skadoodle lately, where he's going to go, what his plans are next, but um, yeah, he's out of there as well. So effectively also dropped from the roster. They're making a pretty massive rebuild with players that I imagine Steel wants to play with going forwards. And um, honestly, we talked yesterday about the fact that Seven, after getting dropped from 100 Thieves, he would be the perfect candidate, arguably, to work with Steel as kind of like, you know, an IGL to bring up these kind of young players in a similar way to Pony, was rumoured a couple of days ago going on to T1. Now, um, of course, as it turns out, we thought that the Seven to T1 deal might be off because there was some 
talk about it running into complications. Didn't happen for whatever reason. Turns out yesterday those complications were worked through and T1 do officially confirm that well the final player of their roster officially right now they're only confirmed four players because they've still got Curry, they've got Thwaifo, they've got Steel of course and now seven is their new lucky number. He's joining the roster from 100 Thieves. So um, you know really cool stuff to be honest. It's a, it is a surprise to some people I think to me included that 100 Thieves seemingly let him go so easily right given them um, you know it seemed like he could have been one of the next up and coming players like at Net for example who's now gone on to the guards and at seven in kind of a similar boat who was on 100 Thieves bench and could have been one of their next up players but uh, instead they let him go relatively easily it seems over to T1 one of their big rivals in that scene especially out uh, of the teams yet to fully confirm their rosters so um, yeah seven's going to be joining him in obviously he's got some nice highlights right here and uh, well no surprise about that but he's going to be the fourth player of their team as is confirmed the fifth player we believe is this guy called Pony who um, you know we're not 100% sure Jesus that clip was crazy like um yeah he actually gets the ace there as well fair play so Pony we believe is going to be the fifth and of course this fits so well indeed with that kind of Steel's philosophy right as an in-game leader as that Vanity says right here Steel is so toxic he will ruin another young player's career by making them toxic also some you know not necessarily his opinion right but just saying what some people may well say I teach them respect says Steel here in the replies thought this was kind of funny as well actually from Valoranting Steel breaking into the 100 Thieves compound to bring Seven all the way back to T1 that's kind of what I said yesterday the take you know Seven and Steel seems theoretically a great partnership in-game leader and you know star player that still can help mold and it will help take him and the rest of the squad to well potentially some phenomenal victories so I'm really excited to see what Steel does here because that Steel versus 100 Thieves is going to be a phenomenal matchup right going into the season especially because you know 100 Thieves dropped Steel and now Steel's kind of taken some of their players away in the likes of Seven so I'm you know, really interesting I guess the 100 Thieves have let this happen but um well I guess we'll see what the implications are over the rest of the season this also to mention I thought was pretty funny Shazam on stream last night just thought you guys might be quite interested in this he effectively goes through like the, well, the whole scrim buck situation right and looks up all the way through his friends list to see okay who's playing who basically just looking at all the scrims that are going on right now looking at okay which teams are playing which teams who might be looking particularly good and well he's having a relatively good time doing it I thought it was pretty entertaining Prime. let's look at the leaks uh oh Immortal 3 is going head to head right now <laughs> Then Jigen owned by ghosts. Oh, oh no. Skull of Arya, they give me time. No, I'm kidding, guys. Let's go, John QD. Woo, rank three. Oh my god, the OG C9 duo. We got Ambox, my mate. Immortal, what? Where's Physique? Stellar? What's this? Like the old LG? Hmm. Mm, we got Days for C9. Oh. <laughs> you guys will see this anyways. NRG scrim in V1. Okay, okay. NV playing out. Okay. <laughs> You're welcome, Joel. Just as a final comment to say on Lackey real quick, because we discussed the whole Vision Striker situation yesterday, now called TRX, but oh, DRX, but um, you know, Lackey is not there anymore. Apparently, that's a team decision to get rid of Lackey. So I guess it is an interesting one, most certainly, but, you know, just I thought a little bit of an update was kind of interesting on that front, because, of course, most organizations, as we are now seeing, have made changes, right? So difficult to see Lackey slotting into a top team, but, um, you know, difficult time, of course, on a Vision Strikers as of recent as well. And just to finish off with this, I thought it was quite remarkable from Scream, given we talked about Ranked and how that situation is going right now in the European region. Scream's been absolutely killing it, right? Top one and top two radiance. He's got a Mr. Headshot right here, and then he's also got Liquid Scream on another account that, um, well, he's going you know, to top radiance on regardless. So pretty phenomenal stuff that, uh, well, Scream has to smurf and still gets to the top of the ladder. That's how you know, if you're on the rest of this ladder and you're looking at this and you're seeing the same guy, top one and top two, you're thinking, damn, this guy's absolutely out of control. But very much intrigued to your thoughts and all this stuff in the comment section below. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did enjoy it, hit on the like button. And tell us YouTube gods, this is a good video. Others like you should see it as well and help grow the competitive Valorant community. Thank you for watching as always. Take care, and I will see you next time.